In 3.4, we're going to move away from looking at the graphs of lines and actually look more just at the equations. What are they represented by and what can that form and that information tell us about the picture? So we know that in the equation, y equals mx plus b when it's in that um, slope intercept form. The slope is that m, the value, the coefficient attached to x, and the y intercept happens at the point 0, b, the constant on the end. So since we know the slope and the y intercept from that form, we call it the slope intercept form. So we're finally given that thing a name. More often than not, we just say the y equals mx plus b form. But when an equation is in that form, we can pluck off these two pieces of information, tells us what the picture is going to look like. So the first example, we want to find the slope and the y-intercept of 2x minus 3y equals 8. So my slope isn't 2, and my y-intercept isn't 8, because it's not in the slope-intercept form. It has to be in slope-intercept form for us to pluck off these values. So we need to solve for y. So what do we have to move first? 2x to the other side. We'll just get into the habit of writing the x first, so you don't mix those two up on accident. I want y in its own right now. He's attached to a minus 3, so we divide everything by minus 3. A negative divided by a negative gives me a positive 2 thirds x minus 8 thirds. So the form is gross, but it still tells us how many am I rising, how many, how many am I running, and where is my y-intercept happening at? So the slope, we were asked to find these two pieces of information. Slope is, again, the coefficient on x, so it's going to be increasing from left to right, and the y-intercept happens at a point, not just an arbitrary constant, happens at zero, and whatever sign, again, goes with that term, minus 8 thirds. So it's going to cross in the lower half of the plane, that y axis. So take one, two, three, those four problems. Find the slope and the y-intercept of the following equations. If it's not in slope-intercept form, you have to take care of that first. With the first two, we already have it in that slope-intercept form. So we can pluck off the slope and the y-intercept easily. So for part A, slope is 5, the coefficient on the front of x. And what constant is added onto the back of that equation? What point is the line going through? Crossing the y-axis at 0, 0. Also, the x-axis at the same time. It's going through the origin. For part B, Slope, again, is the value on the front of x, 2 thirds, increasing left to right. Y-intercept is happening where? Through the point 0 minus 6. So when they're in that form, slope intercept is easy. Just pluck off the values. But in cases like these, what did you have to do? Solve for y first, then we can pick off those different values. So I want this guy on its own. I need to move 7 x to the other side, divide by 5 everywhere. So we're looking at y is equal to 7 fifths x plus 22 fifths. If it simplifies at all, we should, but it, it won't. So where is our slope happening? 7 fifths. What rate are we changing at? Y-intercept is at the point 0, 22 fifths. And the last one, again, we want y on its own, so we need to move 3x to the other side. Now he'll be negative over here. I want y on its own, so we had to divide by 4. y is minus 3 fourths x, so decreasing left to right now, plus 15 fourths. So again, slope, negative, pretty small. y-intercept is happening through the point 0, 15 fourths. 
So that form, that slope-intercept form, is super important because it gives you a lot of information about what the picture is going to look like. Now let's suppose we have the opposite. I have the information and I want to write the equation of the line. What is it going to look like? We're still dealing with that y equals mx plus b form. We need that. And we can just take this information, plug it in where we know it's going to fit. So that first example, when we have a line has slope minus 2.4, y-intercept is 0, 11. Find an equation of the line. So we just need to plug in the pieces of information that we have. I have m. The slope is equivalent to minus 2.4. And my y-intercept, again, the b value is the y-coordinate. It's always 0, the y-intercept. So we need to add 11 onto the back of that. You can always check and make sure if you think you did it wrong. We're pretty comfortable going this direction. So we can ask, what's the slope? Negative 2.4? Yep. Where's the y-intercept happening at? 0, 11. Got it. What about a line, second one, slope 0, y-intercept 0, minus 6. Find an equation of that line. So, when the slope is 0, are we talking about horizontal or vertical line? But the y-intercept kind of gives it away, because again, on my, on my graph, if I'm crossing the y-axis, I have a y-intercept, what kind of line am I looking at? A horizontal one, and what kind of variable am I going to have? I'm going to have a y involved. So the equation of this line, again, we could even plug it in, since we know that the slope is 0 y equals 0 times x plus our, our b value, but in this case it's negative, so minus 6. So did it come out as we anticipated? I'm looking at a horizontal line, y equals some constant. So 0 times x, that guy will be gone. And it comes out how we, how we intended, how we thought. Last, slope of... 5 thirds, and it goes through the origin. That's our y-intercept. So what is the equation of that line? Again, y equals mx plus, what's my b value in that case? Zero, but do I really need to write that? Is that very simplified and proper? Nah, so we can rewrite it. y equals 5 thirds x. All right, take the next two. Give me a line, equation of a line, that has slope 3.5, y-intercept 0, negative 23, and a line that has undefined slope and an x-intercept going through 0, 0. First one was pretty straightforward. It gives us the values. We just have to plug them in. y equals mx plus, but in this case it's negative, minus 23 equation of the line. It tells us what it looks like, and we could plug in values to plot other points. For part B, this undefined slope should give you a clue as to what we're dealing with. This kind of equation, or this kind of equation. So should, so should this part in reality. Okay, I have an x-intercept, so I'm going to be choosing this one. But just to think about it again, undefined slope. So when is a number undefined? If I'm looking at my slope, rise over run. When I have something that's undefined, I'm trying to do what? Divide by zero. So if I'm rising indefinitely and running none, then what kind of a line am I looking at? A vertical one, and I have an x-intercept. So this line, x is equal to zero. So what does that actually tell us? What are we on if x is equal to 0? If it's going through the origin and it's a vertical line, so it's going through this point, and I know it's vertical going through that point, I'm right on the axis here. I have a line that's lying right over top. 